Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. It is the start of April, so we are doing our regular monthly look back at the most popular blockchain games. Um, and I've actually gone a little bit back further in time than I normally do. So normally I just do sort of monthly, um, and uh, but uh, this time I've sort of gone back uh, a few years just to sort of give a... Um, so sort of better, better sort of a context, I suppose, to what we've seen, uh, particularly with pixels. So, um, this is uh, looking at the data from uh, DAP radar. So, on the vertical scale here, we have the uh, daily active unique wallet. So, we're looking at, um, or it is <laughs> that radar is tracking all the wallets that are interacting with the smart contracts that make up these blockchain games. Um, obviously, we could go, go back further if we wanted to, um, but I think sort of two uh, two years, two years and a three months is sort of long enough. Um, we can see um, a pretty strong trend. So this is this is why I wanted to go back in time. So we can see here, sort of back in you know the last sort of cycle we had, um, actually sort of peaked actually in um, November 2021. But um, that's sort of by the by. Um, so we sort of had these three games that were you know <clears throat> in the context. <laughs> certainly back then and in the context even now, pretty successful. So in green, we have Splinterlands here. So peaking at over 400,000 daily active unique wallets. We have um, Alien Worlds here, uh, about you know, 200,000, um, peaking just over 300,000 here in, in a, uh, sort of November uh, 2023. And also, of course, Axie Infinity, um, which was sort of the big driver. Um, and again, peaking at 400,000, Daily actually unique wallets, um, even in uh, sort of a mid twenty or well, no, sort of first quarter twenty twenty two. So we had these games. Um, these were the sort of popular blockchain games. Actually, they were quite early to have tokens and uh, NFTs, all running on different blockchains. So Axie Infinity running on Ronin um, and uh, and uh, Ethereum. Um, in terms of the NFTs, Splinterlands running on its own Hive blockchain, Alien World running on Wax, a bit of BNB. So these were the popular games. What can we see happened? Well, obviously, first happened with Axie. Um, there's actually a big spike up here, uh, and actually comes down to, sort of to zero <laughs> uh, pretty quickly. And it's sort of running at actually the same um, uh, sort of act daily activity now. It's about 15,000. It is up yeah, actually a little bit. Um, but basically, 15,000 wallets a day are playing Axie Infinity. And this is despite... Um, if you know what you're doing, you know, there's quite big uh, amounts of tokens being given away there, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of tokens being given away to Axie Infinity. Uh, it's Axie Infinity uh, Origins now is the, uh, is the name of the game. Uh, but but just not, you know, no one, I wouldn't say no one cares, but uh, it's, it's just, you know, that game has gone through its cycle and, um, you know, we'll, I, I don't think it'll ever really come come back at a, at a high level. Although it's not to say some of those um, assets, the, the Axies and uh, NFTs and tokens might come back. But it seems like, you know, we've had that cycle. Similar thing with Splinterland, um, it's gone through its cycles, had these big drop-offs, particularly where they're dealing with sort of bots and rewards structures and stuff, and it's sort of come quite steadily down, and now it's um, about 50,000. And a similar thing with Alien Worlds, never went quite so high, it was pretty steady for quite a long time, uh, but we've sort of seen, um, certainly last year, coming down quite steadily, and um, it's a bit higher than the other two, but uh, you know, about, whatever, it's 70,000 daily active unique wallets. So. Um, those are sort of, we could say, the first generation of successful blockchain games, really. <clears throat> um, that, that, that sort of saw hundreds of thousands of players and are now down to maybe 50,000 players at best. Um, and now we see the new cycle. So we talk a lot about crypto cycles. Obviously, that's because the price of Bitcoin and ETH is very uh, important to the cycle. Um, but it's sort of interesting that it seems to be, you know, a... A number, a, f a number of games capture the imagination, and, and it's generally not a lot of games. It's generally, in this case, we've got one <laughs> leading the charge. Um, back then, we had sort of three, although Axie was, I guess, the most famous. The other two, Splinterlands and Alien Worlds, were quite sort of um, crypto, um, sort of. Uh, sort of <clears throat> they were more for crypto people, whereas it, Axie Infinity was was sort of onboarded a lot of people to Web3. But we have Pixels now, so this is a game it actually been knocking around for a while, three, two years in development, um, still sort of in development as these blockchain games tend to be. And the big story here, as I'm sure you've heard me talk about before, is it launched on the Ronin blockchain in November 2023 um, and went up from about five to 10,000 um, wallets that it had on Polygon, it was originally running on Polygon, went to Ronin and we see this very um, strong uh, peak, straight up really over 100,000 and very quickly um, it became the most popular blockchain game. Um, partly because Alien Worlds was coming down, but 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 um, really from from um, December onwards, 
uh, Pixels has been the most popular blockchain game. Uh, but what we've sort of seen is it being popular, kind of hitting 200,000, and then really sort of explosive growth now happening. Um, so it is hitting, you can see, over 600,000 daily active unique wallets. It's had over 2 million um, wallets uh, all time, uh, sort of lifetime people wallets trying the game out. Um, and, you know, we, we never quite know with these sort of with this sort of hockey stick growth, is this going to, you know, how long, how high can it go? Obviously, we've seen with Axie, um, at its peak, it had over a million users and then it sort of drops straight down again. Um, could that happen with Pixels? Obviously, you know, it, it could happen. But Pixels is, is because it's a game that's been around for two years and it's, it is a lot much deeper game. You don't, you know, it's sort of a farming type game. It has, um, it's pulling in lots of guilds now. Um, it's had, had lots of deals with stuff like uh, Mockaverse. So it's very community based, um, sort of a social RPG, um, as we call it really. So obviously that this could be a peak and it could drop down, but um, it, it seems to me that it is gonna um, uh, gonna be sort of more stable than than uh, some of the, certainly Axie Infinity was back in the day. But equally, as we see things like Alien Worlds uh, and Splinterlands were quite stable, and then and then over time dropped down. So so the so kind of the core um, sort of I uh, sort of uh, future proofing of Pixels is how can it continue to grow in terms of getting new players in and how can it continue to keep its players now part of this is obviously we're in a bull cycle so the um, it launched its token that drove a lot of um, growth there was a sort of an airdrop there the pixels token actually hasn't performed that well um, so it's, the pixels token hasn't really gone up very much so while people are playing to get the pixels token uh, it's not really like a uh, you know, come in and get all this free money um, and, and then uh, wait for the token to sort of uh, price to drop which happened with Axie so a much more sustainable approach which is good to see um, and uh, so there's sort of, in one to, to some degree, I think we just have to, um, you know, applaud Pixels for this incredible growth um, that, that we've seen in a couple of months. Um, we have seen that sort of growth before with Axie, um, and I guess the, the question for the rest of the year is how does Pixels um, uh, sort of continue um, its its uh, trajectory? How high can it go? Can it hit a million? Well, obviously, it could do, um, but uh, how does it sort of stabilize um, over time? And how does the broader a sort of crypto market play into um, some of these uh, trajectories. Um, one more graph, as, as I normally do. So I call this one the most popular blockchain games because these are the games with the highest audiences. Um, and we can have a look at the, the next, what I call the next most <laughs> popular blockchain games. So um, as we, we remember, the um, as the uh, scale here was up to 600,000 for pixels. So this is um, a tenth of that. So this is 750,000 daily active unique wallets. And again, I've taken it back to 2022 just to give the context. And we can see here three three projects. Um, so we have Upland, um, which is a mobile, it's actually web as well now, uh, browser-based. Sort of, um, it's not location-based, but it's based in sort of places around the world. And it's sort of like a, becoming a bit of a metaverse. There's sort of quite a lot of complex stuff going on there. And again, we can see over time, you know, it, at one point it was over 100,000 daily actual unique wallets, and now it's sort of come down. It's been pretty steady for the last year or so, about 25,000. Um, you can play it without the wallet, so there may be more players um, playing, but this is looking at wallet interactions. So uh, with all these games, it depends on exactly how they've sort of structured their smart contracts um, so as to whether you have to play, whether they're sort of fully on-chain or whether the bits of them are on-chain. You um, have to be a little bit careful. So Uplands probably has more players than this, but this is what we're looking at in terms of blockchain activity. So uh, Uplands is here. Um, so we have uh, seen uh, Nine Chronicles grow pretty steadily from sort of zero back in January 2023, but a bit above zero, a few thousand. And now it's heading up to sort of uh, whatever this 60, 60,000 um, and sort of seeing growth, you know, pretty, pretty steady. It's not, you know, it's nothing like the hockey stick growth of pixels where it basically goes straight up. This is a sort of fairly complex on-chain game. You play it on PC and mobile. You can download the mobile version through the app store, but you're probably not doing any, well, depending on how they, depending on how, how that radar is tracking this. Um, I'm not sure if every, if people are playing on mobile, I'm not sure they're being tracked necessarily. It depends what they do in the game. Um, and it's a sort of an idle RPG, so um, quite, you know, that's a kind of a strong genre, but it is quite blockchain-y, so, so we'll see how high it can grow. Um, but that's sort of the, uh, we'll see, I guess the interesting thing will be in future graphs is, does Nine Chronicles, is it does it become bigger than uh, Alien World? So uh, the moment they're sort of neck and neck, I wanted to break them out to show the gr show the growth of Nine Chronicles. But uh, we could see partly again if the market sentiment continues for a while. We could if we saw this going up to a hundred thousand, then um, that would be sort of the number that would be the number two blockchain game, um, which is currently Alien World. Um, uh, and uh, another one to watch here is uh, Apron. So this is also on the 
on the Ronin blockchain, so the same blockchain that Pixels is on. This is actually not, we're not tracking the game at the moment. They're doing a sort of a token uh, sort of event. So people are just logging into the sort of smart contracts to try and get a token allocation. The token's actually just gone live. So we've seen this sort of peak and it's dropped back down again. So we're not, this is not actually tracking the game itself. So all these other ones are sort of fully fledged games you can play, They're, you understand them are games. Apron has a demo out, but this is just people sort of, um, sort of clicking in uh, to the, doing some blockchain interactions, not actually playing the game. So so I just put this in to sort of show uh, you saw hockey stick growth, but this is driven by tokens, so it's not quite really uh, gaming. So um, I just put that in again for a bit of context, but it's the, the growth to look at here is Nine Chronicles. Um, and I guess the other thing we'll, sort of we want to see is, or we're interested in seeing is lots of sort of games are launching at the moment, various forms um, of, of sort of launch demos, um, sort of uh, probably most of them launching without blockchain in at the moment. But but you know for the next six months this is you know the this is a sort of a positive cycle probably. Um, maybe it will last longer than that, but we don't know. Um, so so we're sorting seeing Pixels is the first game to sort of crack this cycle. Are there any other ones coming um, that we can start sort of checking out? Um, and uh, partly that depends on that radar's data, I suppose. Um, but uh, we, we will be keeping an eye certainly. And uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you will you will see uh, the graphs next month as well. So uh, do subscribe uh, on, on YouTube and uh, see. You.